there, I'm Michael Giblin with FiddlerShop.com. Today, we're gonna make a chinchello. Let's go. So to make a chinchello, you need two things. You need a viola and octave viola strings. And at Fiddler Shop here, just happen to have both of those laying around. I'm gonna start with something a little bit on the more affordable side. I'm gonna start with the Fiddler Man Apprentice Viola here. And uh, then I need to go find some strings. And for strings, I'm gonna check out these guys. I'm super sensitive. We got uh, regular, and then we got octave. These are the ones I want. All right. So most things I've always heard say you need like to make all these adjustments, like you're gonna need bigger peg grooves and wider string grooves and a taller bridge and stuff. But I really just wanna see if I can do this without making any adjustments so that I don't have to bother the luthiers or people that are like doing real work, you know, like Felix. Just do, doing hard work. Get out of here, man. Okay, anyways, no respect, no respect. So, uh, I got my viola, I got my octave strings. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, uh, I didn't have any trouble getting the A, D, and G strings into those pegs, but I did run into my first hiccup in that getting this C string into this peg, it just does not fit. But rather than mess with the peg, I'm gonna try something first. I'm gonna get some scissors, and just I just wanna trim the string just a little bit on an angle to make it like sharper. And actually, I discovered you can just sort of unravel some of this thread uh, to hopefully make it a little thinner. Maybe this angle is a little better, you can see. I've got the string a lot thinner now. You can even see some of the metal exposed. But now, it'll fit into this peg hole. Uh, it's still a little tricky, there we go. Okay, so it's not gonna go, it's not going all the way through, but it's going about halfway through, and I think that's probably good enough. What I'm gonna do, just to be extra safe is I'm going to wrap it over itself. So I'm going to start by going to the right and then I'm going to cross over and then kind of start uh, bringing it around. All right. And that, man, these strings are just so big. I'm kind of running out of room, but I think that'll be enough room. All right, let's see what this monster sounds like. <laughs> much low frequency vibrations just like traveling up into your jaw just like it's shaking my jaw <laughs> I love it I was having a little bit of trouble getting the strings to speak with just a regular viola bow I'm sure I could probably figure it out with a little more time but I switched over to a cello bow just to see if that was easier and and they do it, it does seem to help just to get those big old strings moving. So uh, that might be a, a recommendation. Man, that's a lot of fun and there's a lot of applications I think you could use something like this for. You probably would have to get creative. You don't just have to steal the Bach cello suites, although it's a lot of fun to play those. I'm sure any kind of like alternative style performing, any like recording where you stack yourself, or like, I don't know, scoring your indie documentary with like really moody background music. Där en vanlig dag på Fiddler Shop. Michael och Giblin vandrar korridorerna fram och tillbaka. Han är ensam och han är deprimerad. Han trodde att genom att spela violin skulle göra honom lycklig och populär. Men allt har gjort att göra honom ännu mer ensam och ännu mer deprimerad. So I thought I'd be getting way more C string slap 
like hitting the fingerboard and I'm really not getting hardly anything. I start, I start to get a little bit if I play the double stops. And that's really the strings hitting themselves, so I don't know that there's any way of getting, getting around that, even if you had a taller bridge or anything, something like that. There, I got a little bit. But I'm, you know, I'm really maxing it out. I'm trying to get as much sound out of, out of it as I can. I think that's going to be the case uh, with on any instrument. But of course, your mileage may vary depending on what shape your bridge is in. Okay, so I thought about it overnight, and I decided, yeah, I do really want to hear what these sound like on a Ming Jinju 909 viola, and this is of course a 16 and a half inch. And man, am I so glad I did. Whew, let me get in the frame here. <laughs> collective eye roll of all the cellists in the world uh, at Viola stealing their repertoire. Anyways. slap so uh, that's at least two data points of course I think it, your mileage may vary um, I think that's really important to stress is that I can't speak for every instrument um, regarding what your string height is gonna be what the you know the long-term effects of not having wider string grooves I'm not exactly sure but um, if you just want to try it out and put them on and see if you you, know, you might not leave them on for long in the long term but just for just putting them on and trying them out and for maybe for a gig here or there, um, you definitely can do it without making any modifications. But I can't speak for everybody. Uh, your uh, situation might be different. So check out the Sensacore Octave Viola Strings. You can find them right here at fiddlershop.com. Thanks for watching. I hope that was informative and helpful. Yeah, if you want to buy this product, just click right up here. Right there. Do it. There, we do would it. also love it if you subscribe to our channel so we can keep in touch. It's right over there. And if you want to learn more about us, click right here. Bye, Papa Fiddlershop. <laughs>